Good evening and welcome to the first ever Wildcat Sports Review brought to you by Hughes Federal Credit Union. I'm your host, Tegan Rasha. And I'm Maria Tracy, and we're here to get you up to date on everything to do with the University of Arizona sports scene. To begin, the Arizona men's basketball team has been on a roll of late, led in large part due to Dusan Rissick in the series against the Mountain Schools, Colorado, and Utah, and followed up last night by an offensive display that saw the Wildcats score 100 points in route of Washington State. With more, here's Daily Wildcats sports editor Alec White. Thanks, Serena. Last night, the Wildcats began their Pacific Northwest trip with a road game up in Pullman against Washington State. For the first time since November, Arizona scored 100 points and routed the Cougars 100-72. Raleigh Alkins returned for Arizona after missing the last two games with right foot soreness and contributed 16 points in 16 minutes of play. For the Wildcats were led by their two stars, DeAndre Aiden and Alonzo Trier. The duo combined for 49 points on 19 of 20 shooting and were a big reason why Arizona came out on top. For a full game recap, you can visit Nate Arula's story on the dailywildcat.com website. And for other big stats from the game, you can check out my article on the website as well. The Wildcats take on Washington on Saturday at 8.30 p.m., with the game being broadcast on the Pac-12 Network. The Arizona Wildcats baseball team didn't end last season the way they wanted to, but there's some exciting news that they hope will change. With more, here's Alex Munoz. Hello. Over the weekend, the Arizona baseball team showcased their new state-of-the-art Terry Franklin hitting facility at High Corbett Field. The 9,000-square-foot facility includes four hitting lanes to go along with a full-size bunting area and four turf mounts. Skipper Jay Johnson and senior Cal Stevenson both feel an addition like this can do wonders for recruiting. The Cats open their season at home February 16th against Bryant. For more baseball coverage throughout the 2018 season, head over to Twitter and follow me at Alex underscore Munoz 89. The gymnastics team started off slower than expected despite the Wildcats hitting a season high last Friday in its meet against Utah, earning themselves a high score of 196.325. Nine gymnasts earned season highs and seven of those gymnasts also earned new career highs. <laughs> Next, the Wildcats will be hitting the road for their next meet to California to take on the Bears on Sunday, February 4th at 3 p.m. You can follow me on Twitter at Serena underscore Tracy for all the updates. Over to the golf course now where Arizona's men's golf team did something it hadn't done since 2012 and had never done under head coach Jim Anderson. That is, win a tournament. Here is Corey Kennedy with a breakdown. Hi everyone, my name is Corey Kennedy and welcome to the Arizona Daily Wildcat Golf Recap. UA Men's Golf took first place in the Arizona Intercollegiate Tuesday with an impressive comeback win. The Wildcats used the final three holes to take sole possession of first place 
outlasting number two ranked Texas A&M and number six ranked Baylor. Arizona finished the day 15 under par as a team. Senior George Cunningham came out of nowhere in the final round to finish second individually. Arizona dominated the, the individual leaderboard with five players in the top 25. To make things better for the Wildcats, they were able to win the tournament on their home course, Suelo Golf Club. Tuesday's win gave head coach Jim Anderson his first win with the Wildcats since joining the team in 2012. Here's a look at the, at the course on Monday with pictures of the team and interview with coach Jim Anderson. Yeah, it feels great. I'm um, so proud for these guys because they work so hard uh, year, year round, but especially for this tournament, getting ready for the last month since the semester starts. Um, I'm just I'm so so happy that the that the, the results accumulated into a win for the team too. It's even it's even more special. So they did a great job. Yeah. Um, so the guys had to play 54 holes in two days. So this is for anybody. What is it? What is it like? Or what is the mental preparation like to, to go into a round like that? So it is for anyone. I guess. Um, you know, <laughs> you just kind of take it one shot at a time. You know, we we kind of prepare and work out for this type of a thing, you know, it's endurance, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and uh, that's, that's how we did it. Okay, yeah, and so you guys bounced around the leaderboard, I think the first round it was seven, and then you guys worked your way all the way up to one, so what was your guys' favorite round? Uh, like, yeah, Pretty for anyone, yeah. Well, for <laughs> me, it was definitely the final round, I obviously shot a really good round, the final round, and it was just kind of fun, me and, I was playing with uh, my teammate Brad, my roommate, and we just kind of fed off of each other. We, uh, we <laughs> on one hole, we, I hold out, and then I, like, I immediately looked at him. I knew he was gonna make a putt. We were just feeding off each other, just uh, making birdies, making putts. Just it was just so much fun out there. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the conditions? That yesterday it was, I think, 40 miles an hour, 40, 40 mile an hour wind, and today it seemed pretty calm. So how was it playing out there, playing the gust of wind like that? It's pretty, yeah. Um, it's tough. It's a struggle, especially when you're. You're playing from sunrise to sunset. Uh, you have to stay focused because it's so easy to get get frustrated and kind of start throwing away shots. But you know that everyone's dealing with it, and um, you don't have to go out and make birdies. You just it's more just survival. Um, and so it's really just about patience and understanding that everybody's dealing with it, and you just have to put up with it. I think that's the biggest key to success in playing in conditions like that. Yeah. Um, so you guys, next tournament, if I'm right, it's in Hawaii, right? Okay. So um, have you guys played at Hawaii before? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, talk a little bit about that. And are you taking a plane over? And how long? How long are you guys there for? Um, yeah, we'll take a plane. And um, a two, these two sophomores here have been uh, Brad yeah. and David. And then Trevor is a freshman, so he didn't get to go there last year like yeah. these two. But, yeah. um, you know, like right now, we're certainly going to keep an eye. I'm, I'm going to start thinking about Hawaii, but these guys are going to enjoy the Arizona yeah. Collegiate for now. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have a couple of weeks before we do travel. So, you know, our mm -hmm. team's competitive, and, and we've told the guys, listen, we, we don't care who's in the lineup. We need to have your best every week. And um, I think the most important thing that we can draw besides – the enjoyment of winning our home tournament is, is confirmation that we're one of the best teams in the country, you know, and I think yeah. these guys got to show each other what that looks like and, and how that performance feels. So now when we show up at a golf tournament, we'll have already won a golf tournament. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think our message will still stay the same, but we are certainly excited for the opportunity to go out and compete week after week, knowing that we're capable of something like this. OK, well, thank you guys so much for being out here. I'm Corey Kennedy with the Daily Wildcat and tune in for a recap of the tournament. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Are they pretenders or contenders? When it comes to Arizona hockey, I think it's safe to say we don't know. The Wildcats were on the road this past weekend, but weren't able to come home with any wins. Here's Rachel Houston with the latest report. Thanks, Serena. Last weekend, U of A hockey had a rough trip, going 0-3 in their games against Oklahoma and Central Oklahoma. These losses are a sign that the Wildcats need to get healthy before they charge into Nationals in mid-March. For now six games, leading scorer Anthony Cusinelli and experienced center Chris Westland have been sidelined with upper body and lower body injuries. Cusinelli was expected to play last weekend, but remained out. The Wildcats have seen a drop in their Fenwick and Gould differential since the two stars left the lineup. You can see my analysis of those stats and what they mean for the team by going to dailywildcat.com and viewing my article. College hockey will return to the TCC February 16th when they play ASU. 
Thank you, Rachel. The Wildcats had a winning weekend over the tennis courts. Both the men and women defeated two teams and started off the season strong. Here is David Skinner with the latest. Thanks, guys. The men's and women's team combined to go 5-0 and last weekend as the men's rounded out the weekend, beating St. Mary's and the women's beat Utah State. Jonas Meyer and Camille Westbrooks featured for the Wildcats as they look to continue their good form as the men play at Indiana and the women play San Diego and Grand Canyon at home. Thank you, David. Coming out this weekend, men's basketball will be up in Seattle facing Washington and the women's team will be hosting Washington State and Washington here in Tucson. The gymnastics team will be out of town competing against Berkeley and swimming and diving will be in Tempe facing ASU. Men's tennis will be away in Indiana and women's team will be hosting San Diego and Grand Canyon. The track and field team will be in Albuquerque competing in the New Mexico Classic. Tune in again next week for a recap of this coming weekend and on behalf of Serena Tracy, I'm Tegan Rasha. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and download the Daily Wildcat app for, on Apple and Android platforms. From here in Tucson, thank you and good night.